nerds. Welcome back to The Paper Fold. I'm your host, Sarah, the paper nerd, and I'm so glad to be back nerding out with you on my favorite topic, stationery. My guest today is Alex Gagne of Shea Gagne. Her brand started with letterpress stationery, but has grown into more of a well-rounded lifestyle brand with candle, tabletop, and personal care offerings rounding out the mix. Everything is united, not just by bold design and an upscale nature, but a certain distinctive quality to the brand that is by terms glamorous and authentic. Here, the humor may get a bit dark, but the drinks are always generous, and a good laugh with friends is nearly guaranteed, whether the item in question is hand job, hand lotion, or an exquisitely letter-pressed wedding card reading, same penis forever. This LA design house just turned 10, just as Alex's divorce was finalized, and I get the sense she's really just getting started. You know I have a million questions for Alex, both looking back and looking ahead, and I'll have her here right after this. Hey nerds, by now most of you are doubtless familiar with that fantastic and fantastical LA-based brand, Girl With Knife, as well as its creative powerhouse founder, Alicia Castaldi. This brand's rise has been as dramatic and sharp as, well, the edge of a knife. That's because Girl With Knife is more than your new BFF in paper goods and home decor. It's a mood and a lifestyle. As illustrated by the awards, it's stacked up in five years like so many pairs of Jimmy Choo's. Alicia won the highly competitive and coveted Artist of the Year Louis Award in 2020. And since then, she has been busy living up to that moniker, both within the stationery and gift communities and beyond. Because Alicia is a true disruptor, she has chosen to de- redesign a series of houses dotted across LA from Bel Air to Palm Springs with an eye toward creating living design spaces for her brand. These have been dubbed Knife Houses, and they are receiving major airtime from HGTV and the like. Meanwhile, Girl with Knife is the first paper brand I can think of that received major international press coverage in Ola Magazine Spain, as well as Hello Magazine UK and Ola Magazine Mexico. Many of us paper nerds became Swifties once we heard that the singer herself is a big card sender. Well, another celeb who I cannot name sent Taylor a Girl With Knife card atop a floral arrangement before her historic Eras concert in LA. I can only imagine that the divine blush and black design reading, I just friggin' adore you, gave Ms. Swift inspiration to completely slay the stage. Behind all that fanfare, however, there is authentic emotion and edge behind each design, be it greeting card, candle, art print, or desk must have. Alicia has been a guest on this podcast and shared how autobiographical notes run through every last piece, there is so much more than meets the eye. You will love exploring and discovering every last design. So if you're a paper nerd out in the wild looking to express your best self as you uplift those you adore, head on over to girlwithknife, all spelled out, .com and immerse yourself. Meanwhile, if you are in the trade, shop this brand sensation exclusively on Fair 24-7. I guarantee your stationery, as well as your living and workspaces, will slay. Alex, welcome to the paper fold. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Um, so first off, out of the gate, I want to wish you a happy birthday to Shay Gagne. I, it, it, it's a huge milestone. Um, and it occurs to me with so many endeavors, um, it takes a while to kind of hit that brand stride. Um, in your case, um, you were your brand was born in 2014, um, really as a creative outlet from your job as a marketing director uh, for an IT company. You signed up for night classes to learn letterpress printing. Um, and like so many other houses of stationery, it sort of started, you designed and printed wedding inv- invitations and cards for friends, then family, and then friends of friends. And then before you knew it, it sort of just rolls into a full-time venture um, without looking back until now. Um, (laughs) So these days you have a tagline of, if you can't make it nice, make it funny. And your range is super polished and includes not just cards and other stationery, but drinkware, mugs, candles, matches, bath and body product. Um, Regardless of category though, I find your brand so easy to spot in the wild. It's so clearly yours, so distinctive. 
You're welcome. I mean, you've been imitated a lot. So <laughs> as I'm sure you know. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> <laughs> so when you are creating wares and writing your messaging and coming up with, you know, these this really like pithy copy that just sort of grabs you, like how do you know when you have strategically placed everything just right? How do you know when something is on brand for you? I think now it's easier to know that than in the beginning because I was mm -hmm. still trying to understand what the brand values were and what we wanted to say and what sounded in our voice. And it definitely took a while to find that voice. And even things today, there's certain even in new categories or even in new greeting cards because of popular culture and things that we do reference. I'm like, is that in our voice? Like, is that the shake on voice? And it's definitely gotten easier to say, yes, it is, or no, it's not. Um, I know for some, they think we definitely toe a line. And I think there is a line that we, we hold internally for like not crossing. Like we don't really do anything that's like dirty. Um, but we do some like naughty or like funny things, but it always has like, a sense of humor behind it. So it's not so crass. Um, and I think that that took time to establish our brand and to know what our voice was and to be able to put that on all of the different products that we do offer. Hey nerds, we cannot go any further without shouting out a longtime fabulous supporter of the paper fold, Kitty Meow Boutique, as well as its Dynamo founder, Catherine Hill. There. I talk a lot about building community on this podcast, but Kat truly walks the walk in more ways than one. Kat started Kitty Meow Boutique with an eye towards making women feel confident, empowered, and courageous. Her offerings are the stationary and gift equivalent of your cool best friend telling you how sensational you truly are. So of course this range hit a nerve in the best possible way, and these days can be shopped in 1,500 stores in 13 countries. New for 2024, Kitty Meow Boutique has unveiled stickers, candles, gift bags, and keychains. KMB is now officially a lifestyle brand that fills your days with confidence, humor, and sleek style. So while greeting cards remain the core of the range, dressing your communications with your besties so both of you are at the top of your games, the breath and other product categories lets that unmistakable KMB vibe add vibrance to every corner of your life. Whether it is a to-do list reading knowledge plus action equals equals power across the top, or a pink metallic foiled cocktail napkin reading, on your birthday we wear pink and drink cocktails. These infuse the everyday with power and beauty. But Kat has also built a community for those makers wanting to build and scale their own product-based businesses, and she nurtures your brand like it's her own. There is no need to reinvent the wheel, and Kat truly wants to help those building their own brands with her own hard-won experience. So, whether you're wanting to create cards from your designs, get a personalized audit of your fair brand shop, join a KMB group coaching container, or dive super deep with a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, Kat can help you manifest your every last stationary and gift dream. I always say I do six months of work in a few days at markets, and the ultimate product party, UPP for short, brings this all into intensive focus. It all happens May 7th through 9th at the gorgeous Rancho Las Lomas in Orange County, California. This, there you will enter the UPP room where it all happens for two business building days of keynote speakers, breakout workshops, roundtable discussions, panels, networking, dreaming, scheming, content creating, and of course, fun and friendship. Make a friend who's also building a brand, and I promise you she'll make your own journey that much easier. Learn more at www.ultimateproductparty.com and use coupon code UPPCAT for $50 off your ticket. Meanwhile, all my paper nerds in the wild need to hit kittymeowboutique.com pronto to up their own stationery and gift game. Either way, be sure to tell Kat that Sarah sent you. Um, think that, you know, your design is also the layout and your approach is like very much also what sort of like establishes your brand. Um, all your cards are in a similar font. You know, it's a similar font. It's a similar look, the colored envelopes. Did that take a while to, uh, to um, sort of solidify as well? 
I think so. And in the beginning, we definitely used to use certain typefaces that we don't use any longer. And it finally got to a point where there was a very specific typeface that I like to use and felt like that was very much the Shea Gagne message. So we really leaned heavily into that. And mm-hmm. that's not the only typeface that we use now, but it's probably like 95% of what we do. So once I really like locked into that, to me, that was like very much the Shea Gagne look. That's kind of how we kept going from there. And then in our other products, we, you know, transitioned that typeface to those. So like our shower seamers and our hand cream, it all has the same typeface um, and all of our mugs and drinkware. So it's all of the same typeface. So I think that that definitely helps it stay a little bit more cohesive. And like, while we do have bright colored envelopes, we don't do a ton Mm -hmm. of color on one specific item. It's always one bright color and like a gold foil or something like that. So there's a neutral with it. So I think that's why it does make it a little bit easier to identify is because of that typeface. And then because of um, the neutrality of, you know, Mm -hmm. one, one pop of color and one neutral. Right, right. Like I'm, I just pulled up your photos that I took um, a couple weeks ago at New York Now, and it's like I'm looking at your matches, uh, which you know you package very different um, than other people, and it is. It's a you know, it's like a, almost like a perfume bottle with a with a you know with a. It is um, a perfume gold. bottle. Yeah, it is a perfume. It is. Yeah. When I was coming, when we wanted to do well, when I wanted to do matches. Anything that we bring into the line, we want to make sure one, it's very Chez Gagne that we can like put our spin on it, that it's different than what's in the marketplace and that it's going to be easily merchandisable (laughs) with the customer. (laughs) So we had seen jars, we had seen the clochets and like we had seen all of these different things, but for me, that didn't feel super on brand. But when I, we started looking at perfume bottles and it was a labor of love trying to figure out which style we were going to use, how we could apply a label, how many matches could actually fit in those bottles. And then we had to have custom caps made for all of them. So that's like one of the most heavily, it's a small product, but you don't necessarily think about how much goes into it, but it's like we had to source the match bottles and then we had to source the strikers for the side of it that would fit the side of the bottle. And then we had to have a custom mold made for the cap for it. And then we had to make sure that like all the match, the match styles that we purchase with our match manufacturer, that those all fit 40 in there Um, and then the labels that go on it so like there's many pieces that go into what is a very small product but there are so many little intricacies that if it doesn't um if it doesn't all come together it doesn't make that cohesive product so there's a there was a lot to figure out on the beginning before we really got that product to market yeah, totally. Well, it's so polished and, you know, you see the polish, but of course you don't see like all the steps that go into it. And that's what right. differentiates a really, I mean, I don't want to use the word good and bad, but like a really like well thought out, carefully considered product from something that's just a little more like rapidly conceived. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I mean, like, um, like when it comes to your matches, which are which are amazing, um, and I, I love them. And you and you put the verbiage like I'm I'm looking at the lavender one. It's a it's matches. It says don't tell me to calm down. You know, so you t- you have like the stationary verbiage on the matches. It's in a different format. I saw so many matches when I was in New York. Yours were the only ones I saw in a in a glass container like everything else was in there no one is crazy enough to do what we do (laughs) (laughs) i think we're already so used to shipping like glass in the form of a wine glass or a rocks glass like we you know we deal with shipping glass all the time there is breakage when it comes to shipping glass (laughs) there's no you know the same thing happens with matches occasionally we'll have a damage here and there um but yeah, I, I love how our matches are. They're the perfect size. They fit like right on like a toilet perfect or like a little bath perfect. Like they're the great bathroom matches. They're great birthday matches. Like they're just a really fun addition to a gift basket or a gift for a friend. Oh, totally. And there's so much fun at retail. And if you are a store and you're selling candles and 99% of gift stores sell candles, um, yes. you know, like this is, you've got to have this and it's, you know, you've got to, like, you've just got to round out that category and, you know, make it easy for the customer to buy. And, you know, and it just, um, you know, the fact uh, that you, 
it the state I call it stationary verbiage, but you know more your card verbiage going on to gift. It really, um, it really just really pops at retail. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's why when I was in your booth, you know, for 20 minutes talking with your sales manager, like I saw at least five to six retailers, you could tell they were totally cool that ran a totally cool shop, like running into your booth and just being like over the moon and getting excited to like place that reorder. And like, I don't know. The coolest stores were at the in your booth at New York now. Like I always know, yeah, it's the like coolest a good stores. Store. I love our retailers. They're they're the whole reason we do this. I mean, working with our retailers is is one of my most favorite things about this business. And about ninety five percent of our business is wholesale. So we are selling mostly into independent small retailers. That's our bread and butter. And that's who's always been our customer. So while we do have people who order online direct to consumer on our on our mm-hmm. website, you know, that that is a smaller piece of our business. And we really established this brand and this business based off of a wholesale model. Yeah, yeah, I I love it. I love it. Um, and, and there's just a certain excitement at market. If people haven't been to a market, you know, it, it's just a certain kind of like magic. And like your booth is always like ground zero for that. Um, so it also, so anyway, um, so you also just reached a huge milestone personally in that you just officially became divorced. Uh, congratulations. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, from another divorced woman who made a similarly terrible mistake, um, I just well remember that feeling of just officially being divorced and having the sense of just getting huge breaths of fresh air in my lungs after having felt like really suffocated for a while. Um, So I'm curious, um, you know, what are you, if anything, taking from this experience and infusing into your offerings? Um, I certainly don't want to make any waves now that you've gotten past it, but <laughs> I assume <laughs> that, you know, you live as you live your life as a single mom and a co-parent, um, does all that become creative fodder for your work, for your range? I mean, absolutely. And I think as the brand has, you know, nav- I've navigated my life journey, I've grown up with Shea Gagne. So right. you know, when I started it, I was dating someone and then I got engaged and then I got married and then we bought a house and we got a dog and I had a baby and then we got divorced. Like, so it's like, I've lived so much of my life while I've had Shea Gagne. So it's really translated into so much of the product offering. I mean, I, ha- I had a bunch of wedding things and then we had onesies for a while cause I had a baby and that's what I was interested in. And, um, you know, it, it makes no, here we are in the world of divorce for me. And like, we just put out a card that says divorce, the end of an error. And so, you know, it's always going to translate into something new for us, depending on like what life category and what life event I'm going through at that time. So certainly we have come up with many things as um, I, I pass these life milestones, we'll call them. <laughs> so anyway, like, to make a laugh out of it and like have other people um, kind of feel the same way. And um, I know I'm not the only one going through it. And so it's nice to have that camaraderie with, um, with our customers and with our retailers. And they, I, you know, if you look at the Shea Gagne catalogs as a, from start to finish, you can kind of see what I was going through. through all of that. <laughs> it's, just, it's, fun. it's like a timeline of my life over the last 10 years. And um, I, who knows what's to come at this point. <laughs> so <it's all> <laughs> Well, how old, tell me, remind me how old your daughter is. She's four. So (gasps) she's so funny. She is very me, very chatty, loves people, um, does not stop talking at all. Goes to bed talking, (laughs) talks, wakes up talking. Like she's just a chatty girl, Um, but she's awesome. She's so fun. It is fun. Four is a really fun age. And I have to say, like, you do have a lot of like great, like motherhood cards in front of you. Like, um, I, uh, as someone who's like doing the college thing, like touring colleges, like, you know, you have a lot of like, you have a lot of great fodder coming your way as your daughter grows. And I can only um, imagine. I mean, I don't know if you're going to join PTO, if you have PTO where you live, but I'm just going to say you could do a whole PTO. Range. I can only imagine. My um, 
my boyfriend has two girls, they're eight and 11. And so it is like a preview into my future. (laughs) Really eye opening is a good way to put it. They're so sweet, but like, they're definitely entering a different age than than my kid. And it makes me very, I'm like, you're great at four. I love four. Four is good. 11 and 12 is hard. (laughs) It's getting harder. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's it's fun. It's, that's nice that three, I mean, you know, it's nice to have a couple of older girls to look up to, too. Like just to kind of, Oh, it's so good. They're so good with her and they're so sweet to her and they're, they're the sweetest girls. They really are. And they, um, they crack me up when they're all together. It's like, I remember thinking that I was like, Oh, I definitely want to have another kid. Like, I can't believe this is going to be it. And then they're all three of us were together in a store (laughs) on a Friday night, like level 100 volume and (laughs) arguing and whatever. And I'm just like, you know, I think I'm okay. I'm good. I (laughs) I can't do this again. (laughs) <laughs> I know, I know, I know. One is a, you know, one is a, you know, you should be proud of one. I feel like, you know, women, you have a baby and people are immediately like, well, when are you having the next one? Like, let's, you know, one is, one is quite something. The gift and stationery industry has really changed so much. Like when I think about the decade since your debut, I mean, we were still going to NSS. I mean, yeah. like things have really um change. And it, it, it seems like everyone has their own, uh, court, uh, plan of action. Um, if, um, even if they are, you know, you said, well, we're, you know, mostly wholesale, there are some businesses that, you know, uh, also do a lot of direct to consumer, but like you, you know, you have your approach, um, and your, and sort of your, your model. Um, but with things that are with the business constantly changing, I mean, um, between, you know, uh, with fair, with showrooms, with markets, like what is your strategy? I mean, you've been doing this now a decade and you seem to have come up with something that really works for you. So I would love to get a sense of like how, how you do it. I, I think that all of these platforms and groups and offerings are tools in our toolkit. So Mm -hmm. you use them. You can not use them. You can use more than others and vice versa. Um, We have been lucky enough to have established a customer base prior to the launch of fair. So we Mm -hmm. had a pretty, you know, a great retailer list before then. And it's, it has opened up opportunities for us to sell in other parts of the country where we may not have representation or someone you know, they're part of a Medi spa and they're not necessarily going to go to Atlanta gift or New York. Now Um, we do have a wider range of stores now that sell us probably because of that. That's also why we do magic, um, which is a big apparel Mm -hmm. show. We do all the big gift shows and then we do magic. We just came back from there two weeks ago and it just, it's a different market for us to reach because, because we do sell well into women's clothing stores. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, I would love for our direct to consumer business to increase. And that's why we brought on an e-com director last year. So she's running all of our social and our e-com and our marketing emails. Um, she's doing that entirely, which we before would have been like Erica and I trying to figure out like, a, well, let's send out an email about mother's day. Maybe if we can, remember. <laughs> he has like the whole calendar for the rest of the year planned out. And then we can slot in whatever new products do come in. Um, but it's amazing to be able to ha- have, the opportunity to have someone in that role now to expand that piece of our business because it's been so small compared to the wholesale side. So she's grown it quite a bit since she came on board and um, Mm -hmm. she's doing a great job. Yeah. That's, that's great. And, you know, you, you say you do, you do magic as well as all the major gift shows. I mean, do you feel, because a lot of people are saying, you know, I hate to be like people are saying, but you know, you hear people say, oh, people oh, are there's saying, a- there's no doubt. <laughs> of course they're saying. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> people are saying trade shows are dead, but look at this. You're going to all these trade shows and not just in gift, you're doing magic as well, which overlaps into the women's apparel. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're still, you're still doing it. Do you feel like if you sat out, let's say you sat out summer, do you feel like everybody would sort of forget about you? Uh, you know, if you, if you, if you didn't keep up with uh, all the different markets? I don't think that 
our retailers would forget about us. But I do know, for instance, when we were at New York Now this last in February, mm-hmm. we have an account that orders with us at New York Now only. And right. I don't know that we would translate that business offline. Like, I don't know that she would do it like on the internet or that if we called her, like she kind of needs to see all of it in one fell swoop. And then she orders for the next six months. So she, as far as I'm aware, she doesn't go to Atlanta. Like we always see her at New York now. So that's like where I get FOMO about maybe not doing a summer show, like one of the summer shows. Cause I'm like, Oh God, that we probably wouldn't have that account, but right, 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 right. It's like, I, look, you that makes like, sense with $20,000 show for one account to show up. So, um, <laughs> you know, we would probably figure out a way to, to make that work, I suppose. Um, mm-hmm. so we'll kind yeah. of see, we'll see what we do. We'll definitely be in Atlanta. We'll definitely be in mm-hmm. Dallas and we'll be at magic over the summer, but I'm kind sure. of toying with what happens if we maybe don't do New York now. We may sit out in the summertime, mm-hmm. but we'll mm-hmm. definitely be at the other shows because we are in the Daniel Richards showroom and our, um, one, our presence is required, but also yeah, we yeah. so it's really fun. I love being in Atlanta. Atlanta is one of my favorite shows. And then magic too. I love being at magic. It's just a very different vibe than all of the gift shows um, because the apparel buyers, like fashion buyers are definitely different than the um, buyers for like a gift store. It's definitely a sure. different vibe. Totally, totally. And, you know, and I've seen your product living in apparel and living in gift, and it is very different in both. I don't know, it feels different in both places. Like, like I'm buying, I'm looking for, you know, a hoodie, but I see this amazing card and, you know, okay, I'm going to get both uh, versus, you know, going into more of like a a gift format. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I, I felt like these winner shows, I mean, as, 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 as climate change kind of puts the weather all over the place, the winter travel definitely gets a little harder. Like I definitely, I mean, it could be my age as well, but I definitely felt drained after going to Atlanta in a cold spell and then like dealing with New York and, you know, it's just, it's just a lot. Um, so, um, but there is nothing, like you said, it's a lot. A lot. Like I was so sick through most of the shows. Like I could not kick it. Finally, when I was in New York, I ended up going to urgent care and I was like, oh, I have a raging <gasps> sinus infection. That's clear. <sighs> so, you That's know, so it's just, it's a lot of togetherness and it's a lot <laughs> of illness and people and <laughs> travel and it's just a lot. So, you know, you do, and you know, when you get older, you just get sick more. It's just, and then yeah you're like more susceptible to, and I have a four year old who's disgusting. So she brings home all kinds like, of Yeah. You, she gets you, she gives you everything. I know. I remember, yeah. I well remember yeah. those days. We'll be right back after this. Hey nerds. Yes, it's me, Sarah Schwartz, the paper nerd. And I'm dropping back in your episode with an important message about Noted and Gifted happening this April 17th and 18th at the Fort Mason Center for Arts and Culture in sunny San Francisco, California. While my paperfold guests and I talk a lot about various trade shows and markets on this podcast, take it from me, this can't miss happening stands apart from all the rest. First off, this community event is generated not by a corporate entity, but by the Nonprofit Greeting Card Association, led by a committee of engaged volunteers, of which yours truly happens to be one. All of us are committed to meeting maker needs, creating a must-attend event for buyers, and offering an experience that keeps the focus on stellar products and must-meet gift and stationary people. This annual event is the largest gathering of greeting card makers in the country. And this year, Noted and Gifted has been reimagined and reconfigured as a community event by both the stationary and gift community for the stationary and gift community. This West Coast market promises an elevated mix of both these important lifestyle categories presented alongside each other for an unforgettably dynamic buying experience. You just never know what you will discover in the next booth. No matter the role you play in our community, maker, manufacturer, artist, publisher, or designer, this gathering helps us all rise to the next level. Exhibitors can expect move-in ready spaces with hard walls, furnishings, and lights. Meanwhile, the overall design 
design plays more on the idea of an art gallery than tired trade show with neighborhoods creating a distinctive atmosphere for connection and discovery that you won't find anywhere else. Spaces start at just 36 square feet and are ideal for those younger or smaller brands wanting to interact with a larger greeting card and gift community without the stress and investment of a traditional trade show. As you prepare to exhibit, take advantage of the available guidance and support from GCA membership companies along the way. You'll be all the better prepared to show and sell your creations to the ever-growing list of noted and gifted buyers. So far, buyers have registered from Anthropology, Austin Brooklyn, Cursive New York, Flax Pen to Paper, Mayer, Paper Luke's, the SF MoMA Museum Store, and Sonoma Botanical Garden. And every time I look, there's even more amazing venues planning to walk the event. Simply put, you need these eyes on your artistry. Better still, if you exhibited at any of the winter gift markets, hurry up and register already for discounted pricing and, of course, to secure your prime placement. Oh, and did I mention that qualified buyers attend for free? Miss out on this elevated urban Bay Area event and you miss out on the springtime gift and stationery happening that has grown each year of its fresh five-year existence. There's community, there's connection, there's discovery, and there's design in spades. And you know I can hardly wait. Start planning your trip to San Francisco at greetingcard.org and be sure to tell my friends at the GCA that's Sarah sent you. And we're back. But <laughs> um, but like you say, there is no sub for in real life. Like I definitely feel like, you know, you know, you need, need to see the pro like I, I don't know if I had a store, I don't know that I could buy it on a screen. Like I got to hold that piece of paper and I got to hold the glass and I got to, you know, I've got to put some of the, try the lotion. <laughs> The bath products, yeah. For us, it's like, you know, it might say hand job on it and someone's like, oh God, like that's so ridiculous. But it's like, no, it's the best smelling hand cream. It's the best formulation. It's not greasy. It's like silky. It feels so good on your hands. Um, like it's tongue in cheek. It's funny, but like it also mm -hmm. works really, really well. And I'm very proud of our formulation and, and how um, hard I worked on that to get it to market and, and all of the different scents of hand cream. So I, I love it, but I don't think that that's something that can just be easily done over the internet. Like if you just saw it online and you were like, well, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. But if you had tried it in real life, um, it definitely, it's a great hand cream. Totally. I mean, like screens are kind of the great equalizer in that they can make like a fancy product look schlocky and a schlocky product look fancy. Like sure. often it's very, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> not, and not that your product ever looks schlocky, but it's very easy to be disappointed mm -hmm by something. If I have told you all the times that like people sent me images of their cards and I'd be like, wow, these are amazing. And then I see them at market and I'm like, oh, I couldn't tell that they use super flimsy paper or, right. you know, like the, totally. you know, whoever, whoever did the foiling was not paying any attention because it's on even, you know, or whatever. Um, so, you know, you need that at market. Um, obviously your, your existing customers know that, everything you do is going to be, you know, to a certain standard, but, you know, to the newbies who stumble across your range. And I know that, you know, a, a fair amount of your, um, at any market has to be new business. So, yeah. you know, those people, you know, that it, it, the product really has a chance to work and blossom, uh, you know, in, in real life. Um, so with all that said, like if you were starting out and you were like a young maker with a fair shop and, you know, maybe not, um, you know, not the ability to go to every market and to have to be a little more strategic, like how would you, how would you, um, you know, build your trajectory? Like if, if you were starting out today, it would probably be the same way I did it, you know, nine years ago where we, we, it was just me, let's be honest here. <laughs> um, I w am a huge believer in samples and cold mail and getting your quality product in the hands of the retailer. We sent out so many catalogs that had one or two greeting card samples in it with a handwritten note for me that said, Hey, I think I'd be an awesome fit for your store. Um, here's two of my new favorite cards. 
I personally letterpress printed them on my printing press in Silver Lake. Um, I hope you like them too. And so we got quite a few stores that way. Uh, probably more than a couple hundred just by cold mailing. My background is in marketing. And before I was doing software marketing, I had been in a luxury goods marketing agency and we did um, the pop chips launch back in the day. And so their whole thing was getting those in as many hands as possible to try it, to see it, to see the packaging, to experience all the flavors and then send them to your friends and getting samples in people's hands works. I mean, if you go to the cosmetic counter and they're giving away like little samples, like you're trying those and seeing if you like them. And then if you like them, you'll go buy the product. So that we kind of, I took that into how we grew the company and how mm-hmm. we grew the brand was getting the, I I'm not stingy with samples at all. Like I think that any product that you can get in the hands of people, it's, it's a marketing cost and that's the cost of doing business. So you're not losing anything. You're only gaining And, um, the cool thing about greeting cards too, is that no matter what two people are seeing it. So it's Mm -hmm. the person who's buying the card for someone and then the person, the recipient of that. And the thing about selling them into wholesale is like, for sure, at least three people are seeing it because the story (laughs) of the person who's buying it and then the recipient of it. And so I think that that's so fun. You get to touch so many different people and, you know, at the end of the day, it's not a super high price point item, but it does have an impact. And and I think writing and greeting cards for me have always been a huge piece of my life. And it's been really nice to share that with other people. Oh, so so totally. I love that. I love that kind of like organic growth. I mean, and, and you're sending cards to potential clients. I mean, like that's a personal connection. I mean, I, since day one, when I started in this business, people would be like, oh, this is a relationship business. And meaning, you know, it is, it's all about building relationships. Well, what a better way to start a relationship with someone who owns a store than with like a note you send them like, Hey, I'm Alex and this is my range. And I think this might be a great fit for your store. I mean, that's, that's the beginning of a beautiful relationship. (laughs) And, uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, the fact that you are, um, as you know, like basically the messenger in so many personal relationships like that, A lot of people do look at the back of that card, especially if it's like a super meaningful card that sort of moves them. And then like, what better way to get a new customer than by, you know, uplifting their day like that, you know, from their best friend, because, um, are all your, all your cards are blank. They're all blank inside. They're all blank. So yeah, to me, like a blank card, a strong blank card, you know, that it has to be, um, it has to be like a cue to, for the inner copy, most people are not, you know, able to write like a very heartfelt message with no cue. Some, some people can, but so that, you know, it's the cue that kind of like gets you going. You make a snarky, you know, you make a somewhat snarky, um, uh, comment and, uh, and, uh, y- you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pick up one of your cards and all I see is all your journals that say it's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> I hate everyone, but you know, like these, these cards that are so strong, you know, it, it positions a relationship too, when you're not with someone and like, you're becoming sort of part of the, I don't know, you're, you're like getting into like a very personal dynamic between two people with a very long history Um, so like, oh, I see, like I, I pulled, I finally pulled up your card, (laughs) quite a series finale. Congrats on your divorce. You have so many excellent divorce cards. (laughs) Experience makes it, you know, (laughs) better. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, so wall cards are your mainstay. It, It does seem like gifts are your secret sauce. Um, so I'm curious about, I want to hear why you chose the categories you chose, some of which are not like, are a little off the beaten path. Um, shower steamers, rock gla- rocks, glasses, stemless glasses, hand lotion, and like kind of what your criteria is when you are contemplating a potential gift category expansion. I know that if you make the wrong choice, I mean, it could, that could really hurt. Yeah. Um, when we 
Uh, mugs were our first foray into something that really wasn't greeting cards. We had done like tote bags kind of in the beginning, but mugs were something that I saw a hole in and knew that we could do right and that we could do them with gold foil, which I wanted in my own home. So that's sort of how those began. And originally, when I started the greeting card line, I had been looking for wine glass paper clips to include on the cards and there were no such thing. So I ended up finding a middle woman who was awesome and helps me work with a factory in China who I now work with directly and have been working with for a really long time. And they produce all of our paper clips. So we had done wine glass paper clips and champagne flutes and all these different shapes. And we had kind of gotten further down this like drinky, like boozy line. And <laughs> It just sort of seemed like, oh, well, we could make wine glasses. Oh, we could make rocks glasses or mugs. So we eventually did do, we did mugs and then it went to rocks glasses. And because we have these rocks glasses, which hold things, we could do candles. So we did pour them, we poured wax into those and did candles. And then people had been asking us about wine glasses. So that's when we transferred into doing some wine glasses. Um, and we wanted to make sure that the shape we were using was different than other people. And I really wanted to use glass and not plastic. So... <sighs> That was um, that was kind of how those became their own category in and of themselves. Um, and it's been a journey. I mean, we've worked with many different suppliers and manufacturers, and we've had major problems and then some minor problems, but that's sort of how like the drinkware came into the line. And then the beauty side of it, I knew that there was a market for... I, I kept seeing bath bombs everywhere. And so originally I was trying to figure out how we could make a bath bomb Chez Garnier. But bottom line is I don't take baths because I don't have time. So I don't really bring anything <laughs> into the line that does isn't something I would use myself. So Correct, when I was working yeah. with our lab, I, they had talked about shower steamers and I wasn't really sure what those were. And then I sampled a bunch of them and I'm like, actually, I love using these. Like these are great. So I worked with a packaging designer on how to come up with a different way to package them. We had seen a bunch of like bags that were being used more for like aroma, like therapy kind of things. And I just was like, there's a gifty way to do this. So we worked on that and that's how um, we brought those to market. Erica, who's my wholesale director, I think thought I was a lunatic when I did it. She was like, this is not in the market. <laughs> like what are <laughs> No, I, uh, when I would see shower steamers, when I, I've, I've been... I feel like they were always wrapped in tin foil. Yes. Like, or those not, like really cool pieces of plastic, like the really big, like tear ones. Yeah. That are like impossible to like, like you, have you're like hands are wet and you like can't get it undone. It's like, <laughs> you're like, why am I getting upset before I'm taking a shower um, yeah. or whatever? Like it's just, yeah. Um, the, the fact that you, you know, you, you um, the way you package them many to a pack with, you know, the ability with like a lot of spots for messaging, it makes it more. Um, it's fun. It's a fun yeah. gift. Like funny. It's an experience, yeah. but it's also like, it's kind of like a card in a way. Like it's like, it's delivering a message and a gift all at the same time. Totally. Um, like I, I, yeah. Like I'm looking at your, you are so pretty, pretty funny, pretty kind, pretty smart, pretty strong, pretty awesome. Eight shower steamers. I mean, like that's, if you give that to your friend, like that's, you know, that's a self-contained, you know, you've got the message and you've got the gift and you know, you're done. It's been, yeah. The shower steamers have just been like a really, they've been a great category for us. They've been really wonderful. And then for our hand cream, you know, I, I am very particular about hand cream that I use. Most of them I don't like. I just, they're like greasy and they're like, I don't like the scent or they're too scenty or they smell like grandma and I'm like, not interested. Um, <laughs> so I knew that we had, there's an opportunity there. And I think in the bath and beauty industry right now, there's so much of what you buy in a gift store. There's so much of what you buy at Sephora or at the drug store, but there wasn't really any like high quality, something that was funny in gift. And so that's where I thought maybe we could slide in. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, I think a lot of what we sell has always been put at point of sale and it's a really good like impulse purchase item. So when, when we came out with the anti granny hands and the hand job hand cream, um, that's where people started putting them was at, at the point of sale and they sold really, really well one because they were funny, um, but they're also great quality and they're super clean ingredients and I'm very proud of them. And 
anything that we bring into the line in the future is something that I want to use myself and that I would use. I mean, with so much product in the world, like if you're going to put it out into the world, like it has to be something, you know, that you, you know, can get behind and that you see a utility for, um, I mean, I covered bath. I mean, I covered personal care, which is really bath and beauty. We just call it personal mm-hmm. care in the trade for years. I can't remember the name of that trade show I used to go to at Javits. That was all personal care, and it just got bigger and bigger every year. And I mean, all the packaging and the product was so gorgeous, but I never saw, for lack of a better term, stationary like verbiage right. on it and it just like you say it creates such a um, nice niche for you and um and such a it just like hits the mark when people see it like you don't know you want it or need it until you see it and those are the best yeah. products i think and i think the difference between like us and and maybe other uh personal care brands is that we aren't pushing our brand name we're pushing a message so that's right. a little bit different where we're not you know we're not uh Lubriderm or whatever, like right, Aquaphor, right. like we're not, that's not us. Like we're pushing hand job hand cream. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, who's this by? Like you may not remember our brand name, but you'll remember what it was actually called. Um, and I think that is, is probably a big key difference between uh, like a drugstore brand and something that we're putting out at a gift store. Oh, totally. And they might not even recognize the brand, but if the next time they're at that clothing store, you know, and they see the rocks glasses, they might not even realize it's by the same maker, uh-huh. but it it has that familiarity to it. And, yeah. you know, it, it's, you know, you've sold them and they, they're not even, they don't even know they've been sold and, you know, which is <laughs> it's quite fun. masterful. It's fun. Yeah, it is. It that. is. I mean, it's clear. I mean, it's a fun range and, you know, it's always a discovery. And, you know, whenever, whenever I read all your cards, I mean, like a lot of them I've seen, a lot of them will be new, but I, uh, you know, I can't not go in your booth and like laugh for about five minutes. Just be like, Oh, I didn't see that one. They're all so wonderful. They're really, really wonderful. Um, So um, before we go, um, I wanted to ask you about a favorite card or letter you received. This is a new issue department um called nerd notes sponsored by paper baristas who if you heard that oh, episode they're amazing christy's okay. amazing is all about making the world a better place one card at a time so the idea is we each share a card um that um that a favorite card that we got and i will go first and i will break the ice um it features a collage by the british artist sarah lug she was like really big for a while in the in the in the business. And I don't know what, where she went. I was like really obsessed with her work. You got to um, shoot her an email. You got to get her on I the rocket. I know. I know. Like, what have you been doing? Well, she does these, like, you know, these, like, they're like art assemblages where she's like painstakingly puts tags and puts little shells and little. Bless. Yeah. And then takes a photo. I mean, it's very anyway. So, um, I lo- so anyway, the letter that I picked is from Matt McCollum. He is the CEO of Great American Media Services. He's my boss at Stationary Trends. Um, and so I'll read it. Um, this was after I first met him at NSS. And I don't think I was really, I think I'd left Gibson Deck and I wasn't quite working yet. We hadn't started Stationary Trends yet. So I met him, I talked with him. And then a few weeks later, I got this letter. Sarah, it was wonderful to finally meet you. I was very impressed by your knowledge of the industry and how many fans you have. I would like to talk to you soon about the possibility of you taking the helm of party and paper. Uh, Please let me know when we can schedule a time. Have a wonderful day. Matt, so I did, I did take over party and paper and then that eventually we turned and then eventually started stationary trends from that relationship. So it was always so crazy to me that it was just like a letter that I got (laughs) mail that started it. Uh, So, and the fact that I haven't lost it is, you know, also wonderful. So anyway, anyway, let's hear yours. So I have two. One is, so I don't have it with me, but it's, we're moving actually. Shea Gagne is moving across the street into a larger space because we have exploded out of this one, but it is a card that talks about attitude being, um, or gratitude 
and leaning on people in your life. So my mom gave it to me. She snuck it in my suitcase when I went to college. And it was Mm -hmm. the first thing that I saw when I like unpacked all my bags in college. And it was just a piece of advice on like to lean on those who support you the most and to, I wish I had it. I wish I could like read it. I still keep it. It's from (laughs) 2006. (laughs) That's so awesome. That's so funny. And that's the year I had, so she, I had her in 2006 and she's going to college now. So like now I'm like, oh, I have to put something in her bag. Although now, now you're expected to go, like I just left and went to college, but these days you go with your child and help them set up your room. It's like much more involved. So I'll have to like shove it under her pillow or something. That's like what my parents did. My parents came and set it up. And then like, it was like in my suitcase though. And like, I found it and it was very sweet. It was very sweet. So it was so nice. Um, but the one card that I, there's this card cracks me up. I have a bulletin board in my office that I keep things that like make me laugh or that I like or whatever on. And so, um, my bestie Haley gave me a card that says your chariot awaits happy birthday. And it's a Walker. <laughs> <laughs> it's from spark bites. Yeah. Spark oh, bites. I love spark bites. I remember that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it's the sweetest card that she wrote me. It was for when we turned 33. She has always written me the most beautiful birthday cards. And they're usually very funny on the outside, but very <laughs> sappy on the inside. And, um, she's one of my oldest friends. We met in college. We met in that dorm actually. And, um, she is just one of the best, best, but anytime I see this card, it cracks me up. Like your chariot awaits and it's a walker. <laughs> it's just so good. I love it. It's that is brilliant. And I'm not a bit surprised that you have like a, a good friend who you, it's not quite snail. It's not like a snail mail relationship but you know you exchange these meaningful cards and everybody and not needs just holidays like not just like birthdays like sometimes I'll see a card and I'm like oh well that makes me think of her and I'll like shoot I'll send her a card so it's nice it's always kind of been like that yeah my mom's a big snail mail person like she's always written yes. cards yeah since I was a kid and um she always said she wanted to have a paper store so now here I am with a paper company and like it's just been very fun like it's been it's been great. She always forces us to write thank you cards and I hated doing that. And I'm so grateful that she did now because it's very important. I think. Oh, it's so important. I know now you, and now you, and now you can remember those uh, lessons for when you have to start doing that in a few years. Well, you got to wait till your daughter can write, but <laughs> yeah, she can write her name, but thank God she can't read right now. Cause I don't really know what we're going to do about that when she can. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't it funny? Do your friends to like, my friends will send me a card and be like, well, I know it's just from here. Like, like, do they make apologies when they send you a card? That's not one of yours. I think people, it's really interesting because I know that people are very afraid to send me cards because they're like, Oh, you have this green. How do I pick out a card? And I'm like, no. And then like, sometimes people send me my own card. I'm like, don't send me one of my cards. Send me somebody else's card. Um, and I think it's really hard for people to send me cards sometimes because it's what I do for a living. So, um, it always makes me laugh. And, and I think one of my favorite, this is what I should have brought, which was one of my favorite cards. Is my <laughs> Aunt Tina is one of the funniest people I've ever experienced in my life. And for my birthday two years ago, I, I didn't want gifts. I just said, I want funny cards. Like I just want something like I surprise me, bring me a funny card. And so she won by far. And it was a quinceanera card. And it was all in Spanish, which I do not speak Spanish or read Spanish at all. But it's a, it was like, you know, obviously like 15, like quinceanera and it's like times two plus three. And so it was like 33. <laughs> And she like wrote on it, like, I don't know what the hell this says either, but I figured it was like the proper math and like did this whole math equation on it. It was hysterical. Uh, But that was probably one of the funniest cards I've ever received was from my aunt. (laughs) Those are the best. Those are the best. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Well, I love that you're a big card sender and I'm not a bit surprised because I feel like anyone who really 
you know, put so many cards out into the world is, you know, you have to be a, you know, I think I covered the industry for many years when I didn't send out and receive a lot of cards. And like, that just makes you a better, it just makes you better at, you know, creating your range. So um, yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, um, thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you so much for, um, for coming by the paperfold. This was such a treat. Thank you. I loved it. It was, it made me crack up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Alex. Thank you so much, Alex, for dropping in the paper fold. If you are not following Shea Gagne, spelled C-H-E-Z-G-A-G-N-E on Instagram and TikTok, what kind of paper nerd are you anyway? Snark aside, thank you for listening. Of course, feel free to give me a five-star rating and review if you are so inclined. The Paperfold is proud to be a member of the Evergreen Podcast Network. To learn more about this dynamic community, please visit evergreenpodcast.com. Thank you so much, nerds. Please stay safe out there.